Well, hi there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the adjustments for this old David Brown 990 and getting those hydraulics back up in working order. We'll be taking a look at doing the adjustment for the cam plate inside the right-hand ramshaft bracket. We'll be looking at doing the three adjustments for the quadrant and the control lever. Those are adjusting the nut for the connecting rod, adjusting the return spring, adjusting the friction disc, and then we'll jump over and do the adjustment for the sensing unit cable, hopefully. I may have a little bit of trouble with that one. We'll see how it goes. But before we get into that, I'd like you to come over here with me to the bench where we can take a look at something in the service manual and kind of do some analysis on things. Okay, welcome back over to the bench. We're going to take a look here in the service manual for a few minutes and talk about the adjustments themselves. In the previous videos, we kind of went through adjustment number one here, setting the adjust uh, abutment plate. We also talked about setting the TCU valve screw in the videos where I went through the valve chest and kind of showed you when I made the tool. Thank you, Lance, for the drawings. In today's video, we'll be covering the things that are a part of the what we call the group three adjustments. It's the stuff that's on these two pages in this service manual. Setting the ramshaft cam, setting the connecting link, bleeding the system, setting the quadrant spring, and setting the sensing unit cable. These are the things that are covered in the service manual in terms of the adjustments. However, this is a piece of paper. Let me pull this over so we can actually get it in frame here. This is a piece of paper that you can get from the David Brown Tractor Club website. This has all of the adjustments that are on these two pages in a handy dandy one sheet piece of paper. It covers the adjusting nut for the connecting rod, adjusting the return spring, adjusting the friction disc, and adjusting the depth control cables. This covers the adjustments from people that have experience in the field doing these adjustments. This is from experts on these tractors and supersedes the information that is in these service manuals, in my opinion. Highly recommend going by the directions that are on the David Brown Tractor Club website in terms of the adjustments for the Selectomatic hydraulic system. One of the major differences between the two instructions is how you do the adjusting the nut for the connecting rod. In the service manual that I have here, it talks about doing a, a flick between the TCU and height on the selector and then feeling the spool valve movement to make sure that it gets to a point where the spool valve movement just ceases and it's too subjective. This method actually works a little bit better and is easier. I've done this once before and this works great. If you've had everything out of your tractor from a hydraulics components perspective like I have and have just added oil in, you're going to have air in your system. You don't have to worry about bleeding the valve chest of air because it'll do it itself. I did a post over on the David Brown Tractor Club website. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And I asked the question, basically, should I bleed the system somehow before I do this adjustment of the nut for the connecting rod? And Olick replied that it's not really necessary. The valve chest will bleed itself. The only thing you have to really worry about from a bleeding standpoint is the hydraulic cylinder uh, later on, after you get through the adjustments and stuff, you can go over to the hydraulic cylinder and bleed it from the bleed point on the front of the tractor in front of the hydraulic cylinder. It kind of looks like a grease nipple. While I'm talking about these instructions for just a moment, they're a little difficult and hard to read because the image that contains this text and these pictures on the David Brown Tractor Club website is kind of small. So I've taken these instructions and I've rewritten them in this form that's expand it out just a little bit. I didn't have the original images from that post on the David Brown Tractor Club website, but I do have other images that I pulled out of the service manual. So the only real change I've made to the text is where it references the image. I've actually used the name in the text versus a, a reference using a, a letter. So I've rewritten the adjusting the cam plate. I've rewritten the quadrant adjustments. and I've rewritten the adjusting the depth control cable. If you're interested in this document that I'll be using, 
I'll put a link to it down in the description below. There'll be a PDF of this document down there. It's a little bit more readable in my opinion. Yeah, if you can get this printed out and enlarged enough to where it's readable on a piece of paper, three-hole punch it and put it in here, right in the service manual that you reference the most, where the adjustments are, and keep it with it for whoever comes behind you later on down the road that uses this same book. All right, the first adjustment we'll start is adjusting the cam plate. But before we step over to the tractor and do that adjustment, I shot some video that kind of talks through it a little bit, and we'll switch over to that now. For adjustment number three of setting the ramshaft cam, make sure that the arms are in the upright position and locked. This is the height control push rod. It has a bearing at the top, a roller. This is the cam plate, as we've talked about before. It has a divot right there really simple. The cam plate divot has to fit on the bearing or that roller, just like so inside the tractor. You can loosen the nuts off the studs right here just a little bit and then insert a punch into the bottom where you can get a little bit of leverage to move the cam a little bit up and down to get it to seat correctly onto the divot. For instance, if it's not seated on the divot correctly when you go to reinstall it, you can adjust up with the, with the punch or something that you slide in that hole to get it to seat fully on that height control push rod. All right, first thing we're gonna do is raise these arms up and lock it with a locking latch. Just like that. Okay, we're over here at the right hand ramshaft bracket and hopefully you can see we'll put a little light up in there you can see the cam plates right here and the two nuts that hold it on are here I've already slackened those nuts off just a little bit to where they can turn you'll need a 7 16 wrench yeah those nuts are loose all right I'm gonna put the instructions up on the screen here and I'll read through a little bit of it Raise the linkage by hand and engage the mechanical lift lock on the left hand side of the ramshaft. We've already done that. We've raised the arms and we've locked them. Loosen the cam plate nuts a small amount so the cam plate can be turned. We've done that. We've verified that those nuts are loose. There's a small notch at the tip of the cam plate. So let's go in here and let's look and see where that small notch is. Let's see if I can get you close. And you can see down there at the end of the cam plate, you can see the notch is not on the roller. It's behind it to a degree. The height control roller must be in that notch when the linkage is fully raised. So we've got the linkage fully raised and locked. The cam plate can be turned with a small drift or punch in my case that is inserted into a hole on the rear face of the cam plate. There's the hole right there. Lock the cam plate in position with the two nuts when you feel that the roller drops in the notch. All right, so we will pick up and I feel it drop into the roller. I feel the roller pushing up into the notch now. It's not in the notch. It is in the notch right there. You can push this too far like so. But that right there is the correct position, I believe. Kind of keep your hand on it and get one of these nuts tightened up a little bit. Once you've got one of those nuts tightened, you can come up in here with another camera or something that you can get a look in and see that, yes, in fact, that roller is in the notch, just like you see there. Good deal. So let's tighten up that other nut back there. We don't want to tighten this too much. Don't snap those studs. All right, I believe that should be enough. And once you've got everything tightened down, go verify once again that nothing moved and that in fact, the roller sits inside the notch or the divot as I've been calling it. 
All right, I'm gonna unlatch the arms now and let them down slowly so that you can see the action. Move this ramshaft up and down a little bit. And now I'm gonna put it back in the locked position. And I'm gonna go up and re-verify that in fact, the roller still sits in the notch after I've moved the ramshaft a little bit and relocked it in place. So yes, it looks like everything is the way it's supposed to be in there. I think we have successfully adjusted the cam plate. All right, I think it's time for us to do the adjustments for the quadrant. We'll be adjusting this nut right here for the connecting link. We'll be adjusting the return spring and the return spring carrier nut there. And finally, we'll be doing the friction disc setup. For this quadrant and the control arm, you might have seen in a previous video where I went ahead and set this to where I kind of liked it. It was a good experiment, I guess, but David Monkhouse had reminded me that you actually have to do the adjustment for the friction washer last out of these three adjustments for the quadrant. So I'm actually gonna loosen this off so that I can move this control arm fairly freely. During the first part here of setting the connecting link, I will tighten it back up so that it will stay back in the back in the spot that it's supposed to be. Let me go ahead and put the instructions here for setting the, adjusting the nut for the connecting rod up on the screen. Lower the linkage fully down, which my linkage is fully down. Tighten the nut until it's flush with the end of the rod. Flush with the end of the rod. Loosen the return spring carrier nut and remove the return spring fully back in the slot. My return spring nut is loose and I've got it fully back in the slot. Pull the control lever fully back in the quadrant and push the lever 10 millimeters forward from this rearmost position and keep the lever in that position. Pull the control lever all the way back against the back here and then move it up. 10 millimeters and keep it there. So what I've done is I've measured 10 millimeters from the edge of the control rod here up 10 millimeters and made a mark right there. And so what we'll do is keep it in that position using a rope that I've got hung on the reflector mount bracket thing there. So that's what I'll do to keep that in position. Just like so. You can see the edge is 10 millimeters up. Right there, it's pretty flush. It's 10 millimeters. I will also tighten up the friction disc washer uh, nut here a little bit too to kind of give it some help to stay in that position. There we go. So we're now set. That's 10 millimeters forward from the rearmost position. Connecting link nut is flush with the end of the connecting link. And the return spring is all the way back in the slot. Only thing left to do now is to start the tractor. Let's go crank it up. I did put the seat back on. I've heard too many horror stories about people starting it from the ground, but. Out of gear. In the middle between high-low. All right, let's see what happens.
I almost forgot something. I've done this once before. Forgot to turn my fuel on. I've got a fuel cutoff valve on the line from the diesel tank coming into the fuel bowl. Now we're ready. If any of you watch Matt from Diesel Creek, I've always wanted to do this and do something like he does. Contact. Love that sound. Such a unique sound for a tractor. Love it. Now let's go see if we got any leaks. Took a while for fuel fuel to get down there. Okay, so after I cranked the tractor, I got off of it to kind of come around here and see if there was any oil and that kind of thing coming through the way it was supposed to. And I didn't see any oil, so I kind of got a little concerned that the pump wasn't working. And so I took a wrench, three quarter wrench, and I cracked the top of that uh, nut right there because the pump feeds directly from, the, the pump feed from the pipe goes up through this connector right here on my tractor. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just test right there to see if I've got any oil. And I opened it up and there was nothing coming out. It was, I couldn't see, there was no air being pushed, there was not, nothing. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll just take it off and just look and see. And that was the stupidest mistake I've ever made. <laughs> Lord and mercy. That was the stupidest thing I could have ever done. Guess what happened? Oil just went like a geyser. After you've had the oil out of your tractor, like I have, and taking all this stuff out, once you start it, it may take a few minutes for the oil to make its way through the pump and start getting up to the parts where it gets into the valve chest. So be patient, unlike me. I mean, look, I'm just covered in it. It's, uh, my wife has already got on me because I've ruined a shirt. All right, it's the next day, and one clean shirt later and a lot of oil dry on the floor. It's time for us to get started back on this tractor over here and get these adjustments finished. Out of gear. Oil. Everywhere. We're still in the positions where we need to be. We're 10 millimeters forward from the rear, held in place by both the rope, and I've tightened up, like I talked about, the nut for the friction disc, kind of keeping that arm in place. Let's get this thing started up.
And this time we'll verify that there is in fact oil coming out of the valve chest. Yay! Oil has made it up to it and we're going to let this run for just a minute. Going to let it bleed out a little bit more. I've gone around and there are no leaks. Tractor started. Tighten the nylock like adjusting nut until the linkage starts to rise. Slow and steady wins the race. Let the linkage rise to the top position and listen that the pump relief valve opens. It opens. Fine adjusts the nylock adjusting nut so the pump relief valve just opens when the lever is in the position explained earlier. Pump relief valve is not open. I don't know if you can hear it. I can. Right there. Backing off again. Bump relief valve is uh, not open. Move forward again. Right there. You can hear the pump relief valve kicking in. All right. Now we go down to adjusting the return spring. To do that, I'm going to take this off, loosen this nut, all right, push the return spring forward in the slot until the relief valve closes and the whining noise stops. Tighten the spring carrier locking nut. Mm. All right, for adjusting the return spring, I've already done it. I can't really video it very well. I had to move the camera out of the way so I could get to it. So I'll just describe it here. Well, it was aggravating. I may have to do a little bit further adjustment. The return spring and the adjusting nut are almost fully, fully forward in the slot based on how it worked for me. I'm in TCU mode. TCU will open the relief valve. TCU closes the relief valve. Check it in height control. Height control pump relief valve opens. And it closes when the spring moves it forward. Looks like so. You hear that? I need to make one little adjustment. It's, it's, it's close. It's really close. Pump relief valve opens and it closes when the spring pushes it forward. Try depth control. Depth control opens. Depth control closes. Uh, pump relief valve closes when the spring pushes it forward. Go back to TCU. TCU will open. Well, TCU will raise and pump relief valve is opening, and it closes when we're fully forward. Height control all the way back. Pump relief valve opens, closes when the spring pushes it forward. Drive depth control, pump relief valve opens, 
Bump relief valve closed is when the spring pushes it forward. I think we're in good shape here. Everything's adjusted. This is now in good spot. I made a post on the David Brown tractor forum a few days ago, and David Monkhouse replied that he had to actually uh, adjust these kind of together at the end. You kind of fine adjust it, I guess, into the right spots. And I had to do kind of the same thing, kind of adjust this a little bit forward or backwards and kind of get this uh, nut adjusted a little, uh, really, really fine adjustments to get it to where all three selector modes would work the way that they're supposed to. But I think we're in great shape here. I'll cut the tractor off. You know, this isn't really fun when I'm having to lean over the camera. Oh. All right, let's talk about adjusting the friction disc for just a moment. I did this while the tractor was running and I had to move the camera out of the way, so I didn't get this really on video, but I'll talk about it here. Adjusting the friction disc is selecting height control, which I've got it in height control now. Raise and lower the linkage. Check that the control lever stays in, the, in all lever positions and that the pump relief valve always closes when you slowly let the lever be pushed forward by the return spring. I did that and you could kind of see in that previous set of uh, footage that I shot there that when I, I would let it return slowly up and it does cut off. And I'm kind of happy with the way that this is feeling. I don't have any weight on the back of the tractor, so I can't really test to see if it'll, in the field, if it'll you know, stay in one spot. Previously, when I took this apart, I was talking about this would, uh, this would bump out of place a little bit, but this is, right now it feels a little tighter than it did before I started taking everything off. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with how this feels. I'm happy with how it operated, and I'm gonna leave that nut down there pretty much exactly where it is and just tighten up the lock nut on it. Apologize if I bump the camera. You're right in my armpit. <clears throat> Let's test that. I like it. When I'm sitting on the tractor, I can move it with my fingers without too much trouble. I'm gonna test it real quick from the return spring. The return spring can pull it forward. Return spring does bump it forward. After usage, I may reevaluate and do some adjustments, but for now, I'm quite happy with how this works. I did, while I was doing the adjustments, get back there and lower the linkages down. I had to stand on the, one of the arms. I had to put one, of the, put one of the arms back on the tractor and stand on it so that I could get it to go down. I think we're good to go with the friction disc adjustment. It's really difficult to show these things with the camera position and getting you guys good footage. So maybe you can follow along with what I've done. Okay, we've got the quadrant finished and it's time now to jump over to the sensing unit cable and get it adjusted. I'll read the directions here and put them up on the screen for you too. Remove the top link if fitted and raise the linkage to full height. Select depth control and let the return spring push the lever forward to the hold position. Stay on the lower links and lengthen the outer cable until the links just start to lower. Shorten the cable from this position by five and one quarter turns. And for 885s, shorten the outer cable my nine and one quarter turns. So let's talk about those instructions for just a moment. So basically you start the tractor and you raise the linkage up to its full height, making sure it's in depth control. Then it's not in the instructions here, but then stop the tractor. It says stay on the lower links. I'm assuming that means stand on the lower links or have some weight on them. Uh, I'm just gonna have to stand on it. I don't have any of the implements here with me at the house, they're all over at another spot. So I'll have to stand on these to put some weight on it. When he talks about lengthening and shortening the cable in the instructions, lengthening means lengthening this cable by screwing it in this way. So 
what you're supposed to do is screw this all the way in, start the tractor, get it all the way up, and then start screwing it back out until the links just start to lower. Once the links just start to lower, stop, and then screw it back in five and one quarter turns for everything except for 885s. For 885, screw it back in nine and one quarter turns. So let's get started on that. I'll crank the tractor, making sure it's all at the top. Go ahead and select depth control. And contact. All right, links are in their topmost position. Now what I'll do is I'll stand up on these links right here, kind of crouching down and lengthen the cable by screwing it out of that insert. Let's hope I don't fall. If I do, I won't cut it out, I promise. if I'm still alive. All right, so I've got my weight mainly on the arm there. And I'm gonna start screwing this out. Until the links just start to lower. Or link, or arm, I don't have the other one on yet. reposition myself so that the majority of my weight is on all of my weight is really on these links almost having to pull this complete all the way into the insert There it goes. You should be able to tell from your perspective that the arms are slowly moving down. We're moving, slowly moving down. Okay, cool. Did not fall. Okay, now we will tighten it back in this way, five and one quarter turn. I went ahead and moved this nut back all the way against the collar. And what I'm gonna do is use a black Sharpie or a black magic marker or something to color one of the faces of the nut. So we'll have something to use to count. Put that all the way back up against that collar, or this thing I've been using to adjust it. And now we'll screw it in five and one quarter turn. It's one. That's two. There's three. There's four. Right there's five. And then we'll go one quarter, which will be right there. Now, screw this nut in.
And while holding on to the back of that collar there, we will tighten it against there, locking it in place. Okay, I'm done. The adjustment for the cam plate is done and correct. The adjustment for the quadrant, those three that we saw, adjusting the connecting nut, adjusting the return spring nut, and adjusting the friction disc washer, those are done. We have also adjusted the sensing unit, all according to the instructions that are given on the David Brown Tractor Club website, and all is working the way it's supposed to. I'll have to go out into the field to actually test the majority of it, I'll have to take the tractor out to where I have the implements, hook something up, and go play around and see what happens. I'm interested to see about the pump pressure to see if it'll raise a, a large disc, and you know, a heavy disc, and see how that operates. We'll see, but for the purposes of doing these adjustments, everything is working, the tractor will raise, the tractor will lower, everything is set up correctly. So, I'm happy with all of this. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.